right over here is the scholarship tab. And right now, well, when I checked this morning, there weren't any available scholarships, but it will show up. And like the EPCC Foundation Scholarship is one that everybody can apply for. Um, so I think you have to have been a student for a semester. So, you know, everybody that meets the criteria, right? But it's usually, you know, it's, I don't know if it's 500, 1,000, something, maybe 2,000. I don't know. I know there's a couple of scholarships that show up that are like 2,000 bucks. And I'm like, yeah, or it's like, you know, your tuition and books for a semester, stuff like that, okay? So um, when those show up, check them out. And, you know, a lot of times they'll ask for, what they'll ask for is they'll ask for maybe a resume, things like that, but they're also asking for that essay. And one of the things I talk about with the essay is like, if the essay says, maybe it's just that like random, you know, <laughs> what do you do? Or, you know, tell us why you deserve this scholarship. How do you think most essay, most of those kind of essays for that? And it may be, you know, in the box in, you know, 250 words, which type it up in words, spell check it, take it to the writing center, you know, get it nice, and then you can paste it in that box, right? But what's your guess on how an essay is going to start where the prompt is? In so many words, tell us why you deserve this scholarship. I think I deserve this scholarship because, very likely, right? I've read these essays before, and most of them start that way. And there are very good ones that do start that way. But literally what happens is people are reading over and over, they're reading through the resume, they're reading through the application, they're reading through that essay, whatever it is, letter, if it's a dear so-and-so, I'm writing to tell you, you know, a little bit about myself for your scholarship, whatever form it is, you know, that second paragraph in that, the very first, if you're doing an essay or in this box, tell us this, it's really nice if you give them something a little different. So maybe instead of starting with, I really deserve this essay, you start with, it took me a while to realize it, but cooking is my passion. All of a sudden, there's just one sentence different, right? And I mean, they know, everybody knows that you're writing that because you're going to say, here's why. So you don't have to do, I mean, if you were asked to do a letter, you would say, I am writing, hello, my name is Kelly Wood. I am writing to tell you about a little bit about myself for this scholarship, right? So yeah, I would do that. And then my second one would be, my second paragraph would start with, it wasn't until much later, you know, as I was a little bit older that I realized cooking was my passion, whatever it was, right? That way you get, you give that reader something different. Again, first of all, we think about ourselves, what's in our head, what's in our heart. But after that, we do have to, once we get our ideas down, we need to move on to that reader because we want them to get us. We want them to pick us for that scholarship, for that job. We want that history teacher who's bored out of their skull in, what was it, 1472? Columbus came to the United States, well, not to the Americas, right? On a boat, you know, like... How many essays do you want to read that start with just a rewording of the prompt and that's it, right? If you can give your reader that little something, and one of the ways you can do it is often through a story, which is what we're working on with this first essay, right? I mean, you're, you're using a story, you're getting that in there, you're talking about why it's important. So sometimes you can use your own personal story. In my master's thesis, most formal like academic thing I've written, it starts out with when I first walked into the writing center, I thought, I'm going to hate this. You know where that's going, right? <laughs> Found out I loved it, wrote my whole master's thesis on it. You know, it became the thing I really focused on in graduate school. But I was able to do that story and tell that story of doing that and how I came to it. I wasn't sure if it was going to work. Because, you know, sometimes, so when I had floated, you know, it to my committee, I was like, well, this may come back with a no, you've got to get rid of this, this isn't formal enough, but they were fine with it. Some fields, it's going to be fine. If I was writing the sciences, probably not. Right? We're going to be a little bit more technical. Um, 
I'm in a field where we get to be a little more storytelling and that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, it, it does depend. But with something like a scholarship, something like, um, you know, a number of, you know, many of us don't realize how important, um, you know, 1897 was. People really don't even think about that date most of the time. However, I don't know what happened in 1897. I'm making up dates, you know. So, yeah, you know. But I bet something important happened there, right? However, blah, 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 is something that impacted everything to up till now. Whatever it is, right? So, I mean, just those little bits of variation that you want to stay on topic with things. You won't always be able to use a narrative in things, but sometimes you can. And when you can, it does help because we do connect with stories. We imagine ourselves in those places. We, in, you know, they give us that reader that you know, that, that history teacher, that whatever, that scholarship reader that they are reading more than just one. They're reading one after another, after another, after another, because it's like, okay, okay, now I've got this job to do. Let me read. In fact, old school, whenever these things were not done online, one of the times I do it, I remember getting together in a room here on campus and, okay, you take those, you take those, you take those, pull out the ones that, you know, stand out. So we went through and we read and we're like, okay, here's my stack of standouts. And then we'd trade around and, oh yeah, okay, yeah, I don't like this one now. And then it just kind of gets narrowed down a little more, a little more until you got stuff with the winner. But it's just reading the same essay assignment over and over and over. So if you can do that little bit of standout, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So, yeah. Cool beans. Oh, okay. So that's where the scholarships are, though, under admission and aid and financial aid. And then there's a scholarship page. So check on it every now and then. It um, shows up. Um, sadly, we used to have a Hispanic Heritage Scholarship, and we don't have that anymore because the state of Texas said no. Hmm. Anyway. I have a folder, but I don't have everybody in the folder, okay? And I haven't shared with you yet, okay? So I'm finishing up responses on, um, on you know, your MLA stuff. A minute, I'm going to open your folder, but it's just... So, like, I, you'll either have... You'll definitely have a response video, Amanda, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's like a short video, me, like I'm showing you and I'm going through and I'm telling you. I don't have both of your uh, MLA and your business format letter up here, and but you'll see them in the video just because I didn't mark anything on that one. Okay, so there were a few things I showed you. So whatever you need will be back there. So if you want to look at the print version of it, it's there. But then you watch the video and... There you go. So you will get an email. I'll be finishing things up and I'll and you'll get an email in your college email that says Kelly Wood has shared a file with you. And your college email and your my EPCC. Come on. Uh, Where did you go? Oh, I'm gonna show you real quick here. So in your, um, well, you can get to it. I haven't shared these yet, so they won't show up yet. <laughs> Um, but you can get to it one of two places. You check your email whenever I do share them, and I'll do that once we kind of start doing stuff. I'll share the ones I already have done, and I'll get the other ones done tomorrow, okay? Um, so check for that over the weekend. Watch the video. It's just me saying, hey, excellent, cool. Got things turned in. So, um, so you can check your email, or you can also go to your OneDrive and you'll know I got I, I got it up and, you know, it's ready when I send you the email, okay? So be like, oh, mine's done. And you can go to shared because I will share it with you. And then it'll show up like here is a folder that Rebecca Bell has shared with me, right? oh, wherever it went. It disappeared. These are all the things shared with me. Rebecca Bell has shared many things with me. Here's one. Here's a folder, right? And so you'll see a folder and you can just do, like you can just type in Kelly Wood there. I can type in Becca, see Rebecca, and it shows me, boom, just all the things Rebecca shared with me. Oh, see, here's one that, another one she shared with me called Kelly Wood. So, 
No. So, um, so just remember OneDrive and shared. Email two ways, either OneDrive and shared, or check your email and it'll have a link. You'll get an email that says Kelly Wood shared a folder with for you with you, and you can click on the link and it'll just take you here. Okay. Um, so there we go. Um, if you had any troubles uploading or things like that, we'll talk about that in a little bit. I kind of want to get through lecture portion of today. And then what we're going to do is when I was looking at things, I'm like, oh my gosh, we don't have time. But then I decided, yes, we do have time. It's perfect. So here's how today and Monday work. Um, I'm going to do, um, punctuation today. So I'm going to give you, we're going to talk commas, semicolons, and this miscellaneous punctuation. Oh, I forgot to, I'll change my earrings during the break. I have question mark and exclamation earrings. I meant to change them. So, okay. Um, but, um, so we're going to do that. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, your essay, putting it all together, your cover letter for it. And then really, um, most of the rest of the time is just about you doing work on that. And then I can come by and you've got some done already. You've come in with it. I can look at it. I can give you some just one-on-one -on -one right here help and say, okay, here, here's this or that, or wait, not this word, that word, you know, the things English teachers do. Okay. Put your comma here, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, and then, and really that's what the rest of today is. So, um, you know, I want to see what you're working on. So I want to make sure I sit down with everybody and see what you're working on. Um, and then, and that gives you time to do stuff here too and get it out of the way. And then what we'll do next time is next time you'll come in with like a draft of that. So you may already have one by today. I may look through it, you know, give you some feedback here, there, this, that, the other, but you're going to come in with one you're going to be willing to share with, you know, one or two people in the class, get some feedback there, and then also that you would send me a copy and I will, um, you know, give you some feedback on it overall then too. That would be on Monday. Hmm. Yeah, because you could do that and then I could make sure and have that done for, did I split a day? Oh, I hate it when it's split across. It's not. It's not supposed to do that. I told it not to. Um, so you want to make sure you have printed or digital copy, you can get it online. And then, um, on Wednesday, it'll be due. And so you'll turn it in and I'll read it through and I'll do just like I've done with this MLA. I'll do a video as I kind of read through and that way give you any feedback. Hey, this works well. You know, you want to fix this. Here's how to fix this, that kind of stuff. And then, um, I'll put a grade on it. And then if you're like, you know what, I want some more points. I want to fix this up some more. I'll give you, you know, I'll let everybody know here's the date for the final. If you want to turn it in one more time after getting feedback, because, you know, instead of saying, here's your grade, better luck next time. Hmm. So civil. So civil. Cool beans. Hmm. Are y'all re ready for grammar? You're going to want to take notes on this because you got to turn those notes in anyway, right? Oh, I did. I did get um, grades up. Um, Y'all are my star class. So, yeah, everybody's got A's. I love it early in the semester. Well, it's really sad because I have other classes where everybody doesn't have A's right now. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> so, what are y'all what thinking? Yeah, so... Here we go. Um, so real quick, just a few things about the grade book. Um, oh, I have a three up there at the top where it says grade book. So anytime you have a number up there, that means I've graded something and put it in. So I put in some grades just so I could, one, show you that. If, like, I I want to um, I want to get rid of those numbers and then... I just, I like to reorder things. I'm a weirdo. So, and then um, attendance updated. Cool. Yay. Pre-writing to Cool. Yay. I'm going to refresh. So when there's nothing new there, um, you'll see it in this order. And just so that this makes sense. These right here, the coursework, attendance participation, 
cover letters and essays. Those are calculation columns. So it's just taking like your coursework is your notes, the pre-writings, the um, next time when we you bring in a draft, you're going to share it. That's a workshop. You get a grade for that, right? So it's workshop. It's, you know, all those kind of little things we do, all that stuff. That's your coursework. Your attendance participation, well, it's being here. Part of that grade is your participation, attendance, doing notes, right? So you turn in your notes at the end of class. Um, so your attendance participation is 10%. Your coursework is 20. Your cover letters are 20. So we'll do a cover letter with this, the emblematic, the Papi Puedo essay. With, and then we have two other essays. So you have three cover letters. Those get averaged together to be one grade. So that's 20% of your overall. And the essays, we have three essays. Those get averaged together. That's 50% of your overall, OK? So we don't have any percentages here because we haven't turned in any of these yet, OK? So um, and um, let's see what else. Oh, OK, and then the rest of the things. Um, Syllabus. Oh, that's Kelly Ninja. Yeah. Um, I haven't done my syllabus quiz. Y'all all have. Yay. And then I put in notes. Um, oh, I didn't put in notes. Or I didn't put in notes for me. Anybody have note grades for notes? Anybody looking at your grades? No? Oh, okay. All right. So if you ever see I've got something I'm wrong, if I type a 10 instead of a 100, that helps you learn. Zeros are important, right? And you say, Kelly. Look, here's my 100, here's my notes, and I'm like, woo, and we're all happy because your grade's better because that's good, okay? So I just, I type in over the course of the semester a lot of numbers into the grade book. So if I get it wrong, just let me know, okay? Um, yeah, if it's my bad, easy to fix, yeah. Was pre-writing three due before coming to class? And it was due today in class, so you, you can still work on okay. it, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not. I left you at home. And I oh, don't need that piece of paper. Well, you know, here's the thing you can do is you can go home, take a picture, and upload it, right? Okay. And then I'll put the grade in. But yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm really, you know, I'm pretty loose with y'all within, you know, reason, right? I mean, don't don't take advantage of it, and then I won't be. Right? That's the way it works, right? Kids growing up, yeah, you know. Um. So yeah, because in general, people who show up at five thirty at night are pretty serious about getting stuff done because why would you come to English class at 5.30 at night? <laughs> yeah, right? So, so I love y'all, okay? <laughs> right now, this is the A average class. Everybody got an A, okay? So, um, so anyway, let me know. Um, maybe I didn't type those in because we don't have you know, we just had one set of notes. I try to, you know, every couple of, well, like for y'all, I'll definitely, you know, start making sure at the end of the week, kind of get whatever I've got in. Um, because I know we go so fast and I know that y'all are generally pretty concerned about your grades. Oh, weird. Show up at 530 and care about your grades. Man, insane. Insane. What's up with that? So, so I did get, and it will show you over here on the right. That's your current grade. So that shows you your, you know, where you're at. So, and everybody's is green. Yeah, I showed a sad little, little graphic this morning in my other class. Of it was just the side with the grades, like it was green, you know, red, whatever, and like half the class was green, and then there was this place where there was, you know, some yellow and some some green and some yellow and then some orange and then where's the whole bunch of red ones and I'm like those of you who have the red ones what gives really syllabus quiz notes you should have a 100 get busy <laughs> <laughs> turn some in so anyway but okay now y'all ready for the fun stuff Y'all ready to learn how to use a comma? Here's what I know from 20 plus years of teaching. What I know about grammar is if you can master your sentence boundaries. So this is a complete sentence, right? I got who or what the sentence is about and they're doing something. Kelly is talking, right? About Kelly, she is talking. Y'all are sitting. It's about y'all and you're sitting, right? Um, people have gone home. 
whatever, um, are strange, whatever, right? So we've got, as long as you can like, master those sentence boundaries, right? You get that idea of what a whole sentence is. The rest of it, because the boundary is from the beginning to the end, right? The capital to the terminal point, and we've only got three of them, the period, the question mark, or the exclamation point. So we've got those three. They're going to say, here's the end of the sentence. If you can do that, the rest of it is all about parts. So commas, dashes, colons, semicolons. It's all about saying, hey, here's a certain part of the sentence. And the one we use the most are commas. And so there are really only three rules you need to know. This is my, that you need to kind of know, know, right? The rest of them, you know, you may look up things. So this isn't technical things. This isn't any kind of crazy things like that. So the first one, and I think this is one of the easiest, is when you have a list or a series of things, right? Um, I love a California roll, a Philadelphia roll, and what else do I love? What's your favorite? Your sushi chef, right? I like the Lexus roll. What's that? The Lexus roll. Oh, yeah? The on top. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How'd you know I love that? <laughs> That's one of the best, right? So, you know, if I've got three things, boom, my one, comma, two, comma, three, comma, there's four, right? I went to the store and bought milk, comma, bread, comma, coffee, comma, and tortillas, right? I could be items. It could be phrases. I like teaching grammar, comma, reading books. Uh oh, sorry. <laughs> and watching movies. I got a little excited there. Easy. Boom, 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 right? I used to get really frustrated when using commas, comma. Then I learned the rules, comma. And now I don't worry so much as all. I can even combine sentences that way. If it's a list of things, one, two, three, here's the comma dance, right? Boom, boom, boom. Then I'm just going to put commas between each thing. The last one goes before the end because it's really going to be after each thing in the list. So grammar, comma, reading books, comma, and watching movies. And then here I have the period, so no comma. All right. Now, <laughs> I actually read this really funny meme about hating on the Oxford comma, and I get it, okay? We're going to talk about the Oxford comma. That's the one that's right here. Um, I went to the store and bought milk, comma, bread, comma, coffee, comma, and tortillas. This one is really optional, okay? As long as it's not confusing. I kind of like to see you do it in your more formal writing. So in like this first essay we're doing, the MLA assignment, and even if you're kind of not, you know, being too formal in business writing, if nothing's confusing, don't worry about it. If you're writing more formally, then it is one of the formal rules, right? And like that's one of the ways you would be more formal. So let's take a look at examples because... I love the Oxford comma. Um, so with the Oxford comma, we invited the strippers. Woo! <laughs> JFK and Stalin. Yeah. Right? Without it, we invited the strippers. JFK and Stalin. JFK and Stalin, yes. Very nice in fishnets and pasties. Okay. <laughs> it goes back to this one. I like cooking my family and pets. Huh? Huh? What, what, what? I like cooking, comma, my family, comma, and pets. Not cooking my family and pets, right? <laughs> That's confusing. Not. Yes. So the Oxford comma in your formal writing, I like to see you use it just so you kind of become thoughtful about it, okay? And you think, oh, it's like those... Nice heels I have in my closet in the shoe box that I can wear for two hours. I would wear to that $125 thing, but not. Yeah, okay. I'm not getting that much of a raise, okay? So, um, so but, you know, I don't get them out all the time. I'm not wearing them now, okay, because that's not, not formal now. So... That's where that is. So if you have a list of things, boom, 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 got to be three or more. You just got two. You got that and. It'll hook them together. It's fine. I'm going to go home, eat dinner, and go to bed.
one, two, just like that. I don't need any commas. The end is fine. Okay. All right, so there's one. Now we're not going to be psychos. Yay. All right, another time, and this is related to the where we could use the commas in a list of up together sentences. But if we just have two sentences, then, I mean, here's the list rule, right? Comma, comma. We use that and. So these fanboys are just small connecting words, and, or, yet, so. So we'd have a sentence, a comma, and. And here we have the and because they're full sentences. The comma can't carry the weight by itself of hooking them together. The comma's not strong enough. Milk and bread, go home, eat, and go to sleep. Just little bits, right? No big deal. Full sentences weigh a little bit more. So I could have caught the ball, comma, but I was distracted. I got it. This is me in volleyball. I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to stay home, comma. Marcus wanted to go out and eat, comma. And Chandra wanted to go swimming. Boom, three. There's that list thing. But we're going to make sure and always have the comma with one of these small connectors with sentences because they're heavy. And the way we check this, so checking for a list is easy, right? You're writing a list. You say, I'm going to go home, um, take a shower, and eat. Ooh, we would debate about that one. When I get home, I'm going to take a shower and or eat and then take a shower. Boom. That's two things. I don't need a list. So I check to see if I need commas. I mean, I don't need commas because two things. If I'm going to, when I get home, I'm going to eat, take a shower, and then go to bed. I've got three things, so I got that list, right? This one's an easy one to check for, too. All you say is, could I put a period where that comma is? If you could put a period there, or where the comma and the end are, then let's combine them. I wanted to stay home. Marcus wanted to go out to eat. Chandra wanted to go swimming. Boom. I could do that, but if I have a whole lot of the short sentences, then I do sound like a, you know, first, second, third grader, right? So <laughs> this is our college and up, right? We got to say, let's combine. Use those short sentences now and then. We saw Ruben use one in the Papi Cuero essay where he used those real short sentences and they work, but all the time, no. So just make sure it's a sentence. Where we get in trouble is I do this, and I say we because I do this all the time. I wish I had a coffee, cup of coffee and a piece of homemade cake. A lot of times this and, I wish I had a cup of coffee, comma, and a piece of homemade cake, we want to put a comma there. Like I'll like almost naturally, almost always want to put a co comma there. I wish I had a cup of coffee. Excellent fine sentence, right? And a piece of homemade cake. Or just a piece of homemade cake. You're going to be like, what about it? Um, right? Not a sentence. So if that thing can't stand alone, it's not a sentence. And it's just a list. I wish I had two things. We can rethink this in our mind and say, am I really just saying I wish I had two things? Sure. If you're saying I wish I had three things, then we're going to have commas in between those because it's that, that comma dance, right? So here we just put it together. Um, more and more, though, a lot of this is happening. If it's really short, the sun set, it grew cold. Those are both fine sentences on their own. But when we put the sun set and it grew cold, we don't actually have to put the comma here. And so more and more language is moving toward where it's about kind of less is more. So that's why the Oxford comma in business writing, in most of your informal writing, that one at the end of the list, you don't need it unless it is going to be confusing. You only need it if it's going to say you're a cannibal. No cannibals, okay? Don't eat your family and pets. No. So that's where you have a little play. And, you know, language is not made by people who write dictionaries and things like that. People who write dictionaries look and say, what words are people saying? How are they getting used? The dictionary is a report of the way language is used. Because language isn't, 
nobody can, you know, like say, okay, I officially declare this is a word now. No, that just happens organically or not, right? Like things will like pop up regionally and then all of a sudden everybody's saying groovy. Yeah, scabitty. What is it? I don't know. I don't even know what that one means. But I keep seeing it come up in memes and I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever, right? If it, if it has staying power, if it stays more than a year or two, then it will be part of the language. If not, it will go the byway of many other slang words that started that way, and some of them that became words we use in regular usage all the time. Shakespeare got a lot of words in the language just because, you know, he got them out there and people, it made sense and they used them. All right, so that's our second rule. Our first rule is that list. One, two, three, we need commas, right? Second rule, you got a sentence here, you got a sentence here, you got to have something in the middle, okay? And it's got to be, I mean, you can have a comma here. But at some point, we need some word connecting. And I went to the store, comma, and um, after that, I went home and fixed tamales and tacos and enchiladas. Man, I'm hungry, but I don't have that kind of energy. Ah, oh. <laughs> so, um, you know, so we've got to have something to combine it. The last rule is actually the more technical of all of them. So, so far it's pretty easy because it is a list or else we're hooking sentences together. That's it, right? The last rule is if we have extra information. So this is the comma dance for it. Okay, if it's extra information. Um, and here's an example of how we can have that or not, how much that can make a difference. The criminal said the judge was an idiot. Okay, who's the idiot in sentence number one here? It's the judge, right? Because the criminal said the judge was an idiot. The criminal said the judge was an idiot. <laughs> it's the opposite, right? Because that said the judge is extra information. It's a detail. It's important. We know who said it, right? But it's the main sentence is the criminal was an idiot. Whereas on the top, the criminal said the judge was an idiot, right? We have not separate anything out because it's not about the judge actually being an idiot. It's just about that criminal saying, dude, you're an idiot. All right? So it takes the same words and totally different meaning. Um, so here's where you just really have to think about what's my context. And you want to have somebody else read it. Because if they read it and they're like, wait, is this what you're saying? You'll be like, wait, no, that's not what I meant. Okay, so if it's extra information, details, things that set context, give readers a clearer picture, and they don't contribute to the essential meaning of your sentence, put commas around them. They're extra. Think about it as your baby parentheses, right? But we don't want to just put lots of parentheses. We'll talk about those in a minute. We don't want too many parentheses because, no, it's crazy reading, okay? So, when Erwin was ready to iron, his cat jumped on the ironing board. Now, when Erwin was ready to iron, wait, Erwin was ready to iron his cat? Erwin was ready, wait, wait, okay, but wait, we put a comma. When Erwin was ready to iron, his cat jumped on the ironing board. Main point, cat jumped on the ironing board. Now, this detail of here he is, is iron in hand, almost a planchard. No, move it, gato. Right, and there's the cat. I'm working on my Spanglish all the time. All the time, right? So this tells us details that make this story a little more intense, right? Main point is cat was on the ironing board. It was pretty intense because he was just about to iron. So no ironing cats. Um, here is, oh, I need to make this a little bigger. This would be nice. Let's see. Oh, hey. Whoa. Ah, there we go. Excellent. I can do this. It can be at the beginning, middle, and end. So from Terry Mann to Grace Haddocks, I'm just giving you some examples. Boom. There's a comma there. EPCC has a number of good English teachers. There we go. Main sentence. EPCC has a number of good English teachers. Your handwriting, said the teacher, is amazing. So anytime we get that he said, she said, they said, exclaimed, pointed out, yelled, cried, wept, right? Whatever it is, that's always extra information. We're going to have that he said, she said, 
boom, right there, okay? I went to my lunch with my friend Fran, who lives in Benton. Now, here's, an, here's where we kind of start thinking about, do I need this or not? What makes it, you know, um, what happens when I change things? So with Fran, let me go back to Fran right here, okay? If I'm talking about, I went to uh, lunch with my friend Fran, who lives in Benton, and I'm really talking about, look, I went to lunch with Fran. Cool. If I want to, if I'm pointing out, now Fran doesn't live in Benton over here anymore. She lives, or wherever it is. She lives near San Antonio. So if I went to lunch with my friend Fran, who lives in San Antonio, that's a pretty big deal, right? Like, just I went to lunch today with her, and then here I am now. You're like, oh, really? <laughs> and you can't afford 125 bucks to go buy fajitas and margaritas for student scholarships? <laughs> um, you know, whether or not I set this off as extra information says a lot about what I mean. I went to lunch with my friend Fran who lives in San Antonio, and here I am now. That's a certain message, right? I don't want to separate those. If I'm just, by the way, I went to lunch with my friend, friend Fran, who lives in Benton, well then yeah, it's by the way, whatever. She just lives over there by, you know, whatever, whatever. There's goats, and Doppler Dan, he lived down the road from her before she moved, so. Dave, whatever his name is, so. But, here's more examples of this. The student who made an A helped me study for my test. It's necessary that who made an A is necessary there because it tells which specific student, especially if I'm talking about a lot of them, right? I like say I'm telling you all about my going to Spanish class this last semester, right? And so I'm like, oh, and there was Sunday and there was um, Keisha and there was, I'm trying to think who else, what was her name? Yeah, her. And there was Haley. <laughs> and there was, you know, okay. And then I would be like, oh, and so and so made an A, and so and so made a B. And we all made A's, okay? It was community ed, all right? We were all there, we worked. <laughs> but so and so made this, and I'm like, oh, and Haley, she made an A, right? And boom, that student who made an A helped me study for my test. That's why I did so good, right? Specific student. If you like video games, you should read Soda Pop Soldier, Control Alt Revolt, and Ready Player One. If you've seen the movie Ready Player One and you liked it, the book is great. Oh my gosh. And then Soda Pop Soldier and Control Alt Revolt. Oh my God, they're wonderful. Read them. Read them. They're so fun. The book is super. If I don't tell you which one, you're going to be like, which one? You just told me three books, right? So in this case, I do need to say the book. Ready Player One is super, okay? I don't have to put commas there. I could. That's one of those things we kind of say, and, you know, it's kind of extra information, but in the context of this conversation, you need to have that. And we went to the restaurant, and they had, you know, chocolate cake and apple pie and, you know, cheesecake with raspberries, and the dessert was delicious. I'm going to be like, well, did you eat them all? Which one? So if you're saying which one, that's really important. Same thing here, two different kind of ways of looking at it. The concert that was exp expensive was well worth it. It's necessary. We've like all been talking about different concerts we went to. Oh, and this one was great, and this one was free, and this one cost a lot of money. But the concert that was expensive was well worth it. Now, if I want to tell you I spent a lot of money going to expensive, you know, the concert, or I just want to point out it was expensive. We went to the concert, which was expensive, by the way, right? Eh, it was expensive. The teacher gave us extra credit, eh, which was worth 10 points. Versus if I had a, you know, say a 59, and I knew my teacher was going to round up nines at the end of the semester, and I wanted to get to that 69, or I had an 89, I wanted to get to that 99 or whatever. I had a nine something and the teacher gave us extra credit, which was worth 10 points. I'm emphasizing, look, that that made my whole different letter grade, right? Here, I'm just saying the teacher gave us extra credit, which was worth 10 points. So you can see how it becomes that after those commas make it kind of that extra information. You have to make sure if you take that part out, the, the main point you need to get across is still there. The teacher gave us extra credit. 
So is that your main point? Or is your main point the teacher gave us extra credit that was worth 10 points? The idiot said the judge was a criminal. The idiot said the judge is a criminal. Well, that was backwards. <laughs> It still works, right? <laughs> Either way. So those commas become setting off details like from Grace Haddocks to Terry Mann or when Irwin was fixing the iron um, before daybreak. Um, let's see. Oh, although I used to get up really early and go work out every morning, I haven't quite got back into that habit yet. Right. Main point is I haven't quite got back to that habit, and I'm saying I'm giving you that contrast to before. Okay, so extra information. That is the one. There are a couple of other kinds of extra information, and this these are ex ones that express contrast. So cats rule, dogs drool. If you say here's this and that, right, we're doing one thing, the other thing. So we're kind of doing the kind of <clears throat> balance there. I like ice cream, not liver. So contrast. It was the part with the explosions, not the kissing that we liked. Oh, I'm actually listening to a book now, and I'm like, there's way too much romance. Where are we going to get to the assassination and killing? Dude. Yeah, in fact, I changed the book this morning because I was like, I can't stand this. We'll see if I go back to it. <laughs> Um, another time is, oh, if your extra information is really short and it doesn't change your meaning, it's like that the sun set and it grew cold, you can generally skip it. So again, language is changing to kind of do a little less is more. But if it changes your meaning or you want to point something out, in, in 1975, I was five years old. That was the year I first went to school. Well, I'm just kind of telling you overall that, right? In 1975, I was five years old. I didn't worry about bills or work at that age. More focus on five years old than the year I first went to school, 1975, right? So here, this is extra. That's a kind of gut thing, right? Depends on how I want people to read it. And we do pause at it, even if we don't know the rules of the commas and this and that, we automatically, it's just that we know that's a punctuation. That's a something, right? It disrupts our line of sight, and so it breaks it up for us. And so that's why, as writers, we want to know the rules and use those to get that point across. All right, these are some of my favorites in terms of contrast, in terms of um, exclamations, you know, interruptions, things like that. The, the top one says, fucking a dude. Fucking a dude. Yeah. I love Aaron says, can't believe it's taken you this long. Class canceled. All day to do whatever I fucking want. I love fucking college guys. Okay. <laughs> Man bacon tastes, makes anything taste good. Even hospital salad. <laughs> Don't wear black people. What? <laughs> Miss Wood. A lot of these are interjections. Can you loan me some money? Oh, can you explain commas to me? Loan me some money, bro, right? So there are these words we use, you know, like you use somebody's name, boom, that's extra information. What you're saying is the main point. You're doing that for, you know, formality or to be nice or loan me some money, bro. I love you, man. You're the best mom. Oh, right? Unless you are the best mom. But if you're saying you're the best, comma, mom, you're talking to your mom. So if you have somebody says something, Kelly says, she says, they exclaim, they yell, a comma. And if you're using somebody's name, unless I'm saying my mom's name was Joy, but if I say, hey, mom, comma, I really miss you. I really miss you, mom. So that's where, um, oh, this one, a favorite. Let's cook grandma. Cool. Let's cook grandma. Not cool. Okay. That's where we need those commas. So exclamations. Wow. Hey, yo, dude, ta-da. Yikes. Same thing. Set those off with a comma. So we have man. Bacon makes anything taste good. Even hospital salad. Don't wear black, people. Wear colors. Yeah. Class canceled. All day to do whatever I fucking want. I love fucking college, guys. 
Unless you love fucking college guys, then don't put the comma in there. <laughs> fucking A, dude. Unless you are saying fucking a dude, in which case, yeah. All right, so all of those things are like exclamations, putting somebody's name in. They're, again, just extra stuff. We don't have to have it in there. Okay, so. All right, so extra stuff, if you can take it out. And your sentence still, yeah, you might not have all the details. You might not know Erwin was fixing the iron, but the point is the cat was on the ironing board. You know, the extra credit was worth $100. $100. Oh, man, I wish. Okay, <laughs> so um, from Terry Mann to Grace Haddix. EPCC has a number of English teachers, except for Grace Haddix retired, but she still teaches the Brit Lit. And if you need a humanities and you see, because you're humanities, you can take classes where you read textbooks or you can take class with Grace Haddix and it is an English class, but it's not half the work. 1301 and 1302, we're doing writing essays. So this is like the workhorses, right? You get to the literature classes you may have some tests. You may have like a paper too, like short ones. Like our essay two is going to be a two pager. Grace is like no more than two pages. Really, don't give me. And I'm going to be like, I don't want more than two pages. And some of you are going to be like, yes. And some of y'all are going to be like, but I have more ideas to go in there. I'm going to be like, mm, okay. Grace Haddix is amazing. And like, if you take the the Britlet too, which you don't have to take them in order. You get to read Frankenstein and shit like that. It's a lot of fun. So check her out on, on Rate My Professor. People have amazing things to say about her. So. Okay, so if you can take the info out, I'm sorry, digression there. Um, then you want those to be in commas. Think of them like little baby parentheses, okay? Um, now, these usually don't stand alone. We usually use them all together for, so here's an example. My dog, little buddy, ran in and jumped on the counter and he started talking. So my dog, little buddy, ran in and jumped on the counter. I've got ran in and jumped. Boom. But then one more thing. And he started talking, right? So I'm doing the comma for those lists, right? But really, I might have something like this. While I was looking out the window, oh, there's extra information, detail. My dog, little buddy, who is somewhat of a scallywag and at times very sneaky, there's extra information, ran in and jumped, jumped on the counter. And much to my surprise, he started talking, comma, saying, hey, human, comma, because he's calling me something. Give me some bacon, comma, eggs, comma, and toast. He hasn't done that yet, but he's looked at me like that when I fixed breakfast. And he actually could flat-footed jump up on the counter, and he's like this tall. He's a cat dog. He is a cat dog. A little pain in the butt, too. A little white brat dog. So point is, is yeah, it's kind of easy to look at deconstructed, but in real life, then we get it in our sentences, right? But now when Grammarly says... You're connecting two sentences here, and it loves the semicolon. Did anybody notice that? It's just in love with the semicolon. Oh, my gosh. We're going to talk about the semicolon next. But we've gone over these three things. All of a sudden, you learn the three basic rules of commas. Now, we do things like El Paso, comma, Texas, and, you know, other just kind of general things for convention. But in terms of writing, all of the comma rules, and they're like eight or ten, they almost all fall in these three. Actually, most of them fall in the extra information thing. There's this one and that one. And then there's, we looked at just a lot of different ways you could do this. Okay. So that's commas. And those are pretty easy. Oh, what are we going to do? We're going to learn the rules like a pro so we can break them like an artist. Because I'm teaching you the science. Here's the rules, the science, all that kind of stuff. But then we move into the arts, so that's why we can't just take a test and be done with English class. Oh, darn it. So, all right. Feel a little bit demystified? Some of that extra information thing gets a little shady once in a while, but it makes more sense when it's in the context of your own writing. Because you know, like, oh, is this something I'm just saying, by the way, or, hey, here's also a detail, 
or does it really belong with this sentence? And then when you're not sure, that's why you get a reader, get somebody to read it to you, because there are a lot of things that Grammarly can tell you and because of just the way the rules of language work. But then there are other things that um, we can break the rules with, things like that. So. so, yeah, Grammarly loves the semicolon. It'll be like, ah, you could put a semicolon here, but you could also put a period there, right? Because what do semicolons and colons do? These are nice. The rules are simple. There are two semicolon rules. I'm going to teach you both of them and ask you to forget one of them. Cool? All right. Excellent. Let's see. So they're both balancing ideas. So that's the metaphor I like to think. It's this, We've got a balance of things, but used in different situations. So semicolons separate sentences. We can call them main clauses if we want not joined by coordinating conjunctions. So we don't have the and or anything. We're just like, this is a one-two punch. Boom, boom, boom. That's all we got. We're not going to put anything between it. We're not going to put that period because we don't want it quite that different, right? But we're not going to put comma and because we're like, no, mm, it's just too wordy. We just want boom, boom, okay? So it shows you when would you use it because... There's a great quote, I think it's Oscar Wilde, I forget who, said, all being able to use a semicolon shows is that you went to college. Okay, too many of them, this is the salty lecture, right? Y'all read about the tamales and the salt and my sister-in-law bringing over, my ex-husband and I were sitting one Christmas and <laughs> knock, 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 doorbell rings and there's Irma at the door with tamales wrapped in foil and everything, you know, where they're warm, right? They just made them and we talk a while and then she goes away and we open them up and we're like, man, we're so ready for these homemade tamales because tamales aren't hard to make. They're just a process. It is a labor of love, right? Yes. It's an all day thing. Yeah. So we open them up and we take a bite and we're like, blah. Because they were so salty. I mean, like, you know, not just the salt shaker, but the little barrel of salt. I'm sure she was, somebody was, they were sisters all in there talking. And somebody went instead of like this and like that. They're like, oh, yeah, 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 uh-huh. Meanwhile, like we put queso on them. We put sour cream on them. We did everything we could to try to eat those homemade tamales because you could tell they were good. The masa on the outside was good. The meat on the inside was good. It was so good, but it was so salty. <clears throat> so salt is necessary for our bodies. Somebody has very low sodium, that's something you can die from. And you have too much sodium. This is problematic. Food. Some things need salt, right? Too much salt. You can't take that out, man. I just like, no way, right? So it's a balance. And so everything from here on out in terms of punctuation is salty. Use it judiciously. Use it carefully. If you just throw a bunch of it in, your readers are going to be like, well, show off. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so don't do it. So when would we want to do this? We want to show contrasted like there and there or a balance of ideas. Here are examples. Every day a fool is full of choice. Boom. We could put a period right there. It is also full of opportunity. But if we're like, you know what? Or we could put every day is full of choice, comma, and it is full of opportunity. But if we want something just a little bit more boom, boom, right? We can just use that semicolon, and it doesn't put that full stop between them of a period, but... It does connect, you know, it connects them a little more. He is still carving surfboards at the age of 90. Whoa, dude's old, right? Let's, let's face it, 90, that's old, okay? He is still the finest. Dang, really? Contrast, right? Still carving surfboards at the age of 90? Still the finest, right? Every day is full of choice. It is also full of opportunity. Different if we have a period, right? They all work. All three of them are correct. So from this point on, basically, we're looking at different ways to set apart parts. And so that's what you mean. That is the main semicolon rule. So when Grammarly suggests a semicolon, in your head, you think, would it be better to put a period here? Do I want these sentences separate? So that it's just like, 
Papifuero, right? And that where at the end where he gives that litany, you know, it's 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 security, it's there, just like Papi Fuero. He's got like those three or four short sentences, they work. Right? Boom, they're sentences. They wouldn't be the same if it was the semicolons or the comma and. It would still have lyricism, it would still work, but it works really well because of that. So you ask yourself, could I put a period there? Could I put the comma and? Or is this something that's worth salting up a little bit and using that semicolon? Just don't go crazy with them. Don't go crazy. Uh oh, let's go crazy. So, complete sentences on their own and no, no coordinating conjunction, right? No and there. Right. Um, we might use words like this in between. And this is where when we get to essay two and three and we're going to do our formal essays, we're not going to throw big words in it just to throw big words in it. The way we make it sound more formal is we stop saying I, me, my, and you, and we start doing some of this stuff. Furthermore, blah, 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 blah. However, blah, 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 blah. On the other hand, right, whatever. So we're using these kind of bigger combiners. Going to college challenges you to balance a number of things in your life. First test, that's a full sentence. In doing this, you may find you don't have as much time for something you did before. That's a full sentence. I can hook them together with a semicolon and say, however, in doing this, you may find you don't have as much time as you did for something before. Multitasking is often praised. Nevertheless, my favorite, because it's like three words in one. Research shows we do better when we focus on one thing at a time. I could make those two sentences. I could say multitasking is often praised, comma, but research shows we do work better when we focus on one thing at a time. All of those work. Choices, the art, right? We get those choices. So you just think about that. The however, otherwise, that kind of thing, they do sound a little more formal. Right? So, so here's the rule I'm going to teach you and tell you to forget. I rarely use this. The, I've used it, like, really, I think I've used it, like, once or twice in my own writing for work, um, but most of the time in examples to show it to students. So this is one of those things that, that you may need one of these days, and you'll be like, wait, I think this is that rule Kelly told me to forget. And then you'll go look it up, okay? If you have a bunch, a bunch of commas, so let's say you have a list and extra information, you might go get comatose. So what we can do is we can do, we've got the extra information with commas, and then we could use semicolons for like the kind of next level up. There are at least three ways to write. With a pen or pencil, oh, boom, which is expensive and easily accessible, so we're using this comma to set off our extra information. And then we're gonna say, here's another one, semicolon, by computer and printer, so there's number two, which is more expensive but quicker need, that's our extra information, or with a chisel and hammer, extra information, which is rarely used this day and age. Boom, like that. We went to Reno, Nevada, semicolon, Eugene, Oregon, semicolon, Bangor, Maine, semicolon, and El Paso, Texas. If all of this was comma, 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 it would be confusing, okay? So, I mean, that's, I've rarely used it, but now you know, if you have extra information in a list, so basically you're putting those two comma rules together, then semicolons between each thing in the list, comma for the extra information. Okay. Now you know. That's it. Really, this is the semicolon rule you want to use. Remember, <clears throat> complete sentences, you don't want to put a period, you don't want to put comma and, comma but, comma so, whatever. Just boom, throw in that semicolon and you're good to go. But use it smartly, wisely. Okay. Now a colon just sets off extra information. So we want to step up from the comma for extra information. Boom, we can use the colon. It generally does specific kinds, like an itemized series. If we say one, two, three things, right? A statement or a quotation. So if you're doing, you're quoting someone, 
a clarifying detail that would basically, here's that balance, mean the same thing this sentence said, right? Um, and it puts emphasis on these. Here's your rule for in your essays with a colon. If we're doing business writing where we've got, you know, um, we've got a bulleted list, right? In your essay, you have to use narrative, you know, description, you know, in your essay. I will look for these things in your essay, colon, right? First part's got to be a sentence. I will look for these things in your essay, colon, and I could have that bulleted list, right? So if that first part's a sentence, we're going to put the colon, and then we can have the rest of it. For example, my mother, wait, hold on. Yeah, okay. My mother taught me three things. I could say class is over right now, and you would be like, what? What did your mother teach you I need to know? But I'm going to give them three things. To make my bed in the morning, to clean up the kitchen as I go, and to have a happy attitude. You will have a happy attitude. What's wrong? Your arm broken? Your dog dead? Nope. Get happy. She was tough love mom. Okay? So notice how that first part, complete sentence. Wait, where'd it go? There it is, right? Yeah, I'm not a kitty, clearly. Okay? So my mother taught me three things. The other side of the colon is the three things, right? It's basically an equal sign. Proportion, same thing. Proportion, we're using that from math, okay? At the end of the semester, the students danced and sang. Would you like to know what they danced and sang? Or what they sang, at least? No more English 1301. Hurrah, hurrah, it's all done. So if you have a quote and you've got a full sentence to start it off, the he said, she said, they said, or they sang, comma, no more English 1301. That'd just be the comma. But I got a full sentence here, and then I'm going to give you a quote. Boom, colon, shine a light on it. All right? That's it. Okay? Um, if the, when the quote here is a sentence of its own, you go ahead and put the capital there. So just bring the capital over with the quote, exactly what people said. All right. So in my life, I have only one regret. I have done stupid things. Hey, I've lived in Vegas. And let me tell you, there are a lot of stuff that stayed in Vegas because, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't regret them. They're, they make me who I am, right? I wouldn't be who I am. But there is one thing, one thing. I guess I kind of regret it. I have kind of some, I don't regret it, but I do have a whole lot of I regret it. I should have never started smoking. Now, I quit in February of 2020, so four years, and I still want a cigarette, man. Like the other day, I was like, oh, shit, man. I, sometimes I go over to my friend Shannon's, and she'll be holding a cigarette, and I'll be like, you got to light that up. And at first, she'd be like, I don't want to smoke in your face. I'm like, I'm here for the secondhand smoke. <laughs> I have only one regret. It's got to be, I could have not showed you that and walked away and you'd have been just left with the mystery, right? So it's got to be a full sentence. Then the colon, boom. I'm just like spotlighting it saying I should have never started smoking. So, yeah, that was hard. I gave it up cold turkey too. And I'm so glad because it was so hard that I'm like, yeah, I'm a grown ass adult. If I wanted to start smoking again, I can my body, my life, right? But I am not going through that again. Now, if the doctor told me, like, I, you, I am sure you are going to die in like the next six weeks, six months, I'd probably go smoke and I'd be like, oh, this is gross. I'm never doing that again. <laughs> so, who knows? The key thing you don't want to do is don't let a colon disconnect sentence parts. You make sure of that by making sure this first part's a full sentence. Okay, here's a blah, 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 verb, object, preposition. Here's examples. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay. There we go. Okay, the trainer began harping on. Not a full sentence, right? That colon says, look, this is a distinct part, and this other stuff is a distinct part. One or the other has to stand alone, because we can have extra information as long as we've got sentence stuff with it. But if we don't have sentence stuff with it and we just got a whole lot of extra information, 
it falls apart, okay? So here, the trainer began harping on the receivers, the offensive linemen, the quarterback, and the second string kicker, right? We need, because then we could check this by saying, look, that's just a bunch of people. The trainer began harping on them. We wouldn't write the trainer began harping on, colon, them. Right? No, I get the reason we want to do that. This next one is one we want to do a lot. Like I'll do it and like while I'm typing it, I'm like, stop, that's wrong. And then I'll fix it. Um, I like the number of fruits such as, for example, people always put such as or for example and a colon. No, it gets the comma. It's extra information. Because to say I like a bunch of, of number of fruits such as and then for me to walk away you're like, you didn't finish, right? And so a colon shows, wait, here's this thing, and then I'm going to give you an example of it. Or if they danced and sang, I'm going to give you the words they sang. Or, you know, I have one regret, I'm going to give you the regret. But it's got to say at first, here's the sentence, right? So I like a number of fruits. I could just put colon, pineapple, dragon fruit, papaya, and mango. Or I could just say, hey, look, all that shit's extra information, and I got a list. I like a number of fruits, comma, such as pineapple, dragon fruit, papaya, and mango. That whole thing's extra information. Just like that. Cool beans? So that's kind of like the big place we make mistakes. And so whenever I proofread my writing, I tell you, hey, here's where we mo like make mistakes most. Because like, I will look for those things. I would like a cup of coffee and a piece of homemade cake. Like I'll read and I'll look for, am I putting that comma just between a list of two things? Because right? <laughs> I know like that's the mistake we make. I will read and like be like, oh, wait, you have a colon. I'm going to make sure I got that full sentence. And if not, I'm going to say, wait, Maybe I need a comma. Maybe I don't need anything. No. All right. Semicolons, two closely related sentences. We're going to forget the other rule, right? So I'm going to show contrast. Nuclear ha waste is hazardous. This is an indisputable fact. He is still carving surfboards at the age of 90. He is still the finest. Boom, boom, right? We want to put those together. Colons, if you've got that list, that quote, that, you know, direct direct quote, the clarifying detail, whatever it is like that, you just make sure you have that full sentence at the first. And that's it. Parts, right? Parts is parts. Are y'all up for one more and then we'll take a break? Oh, how grammared you thoroughly. Okay, one more. One more, one more, one more. Let's see. Where is it at that? This is the miscellaneous punctuation one. And all of these are on the grammar page. So if you want to go back and look at them, they're there. If you want to, I have most of the ones that I have videos for if you want me to do the dances for you. Um, I've got those. Some of them, yeah, the, the pre-COVID, you know, the during COVID, the everything. I keep thinking I'm going to update them all and fix them all. Yeah, it is what it is, right? Life is that way. So this is miscellaneous. This is just everything else, okay? Maybe not everything, but mostly. Okay, so first we're going to start with the dash and the hyphen. So the dash is made up of two hyphens. So the short one is the hyphen. And when you put two of them together, that becomes a dash, okay? And in Word, it will often, so like here in Word, let me get a new one. Here we go. Let's see. Let's make this bigger. All right, so um, my dog, who is a little brat, is named Little uh, Buddy, whatever. Yeah, it's supposed to be Little Buddy with the, the, with the oh, wait, hold on, because we're going to talk about this in a minute. And I'll do it right. Okay, well, because I'm leaving out words, right? So I've got that that apostrophe there, a little buddy. Okay. So did you see how I typed in here? I typed in dog, two hyphens, right? And once, since I didn't put any spaces, no spaces there, who, once I put in that next word and I put that space in, word will turn it into the dash. Now, if you're typing and your word processor just leaves it like that, make sure you don't have any spaces on either side of it. But if it just leaves it like that, that's fine. Okay, that's still recognized as a dash. 
It's what we did back in the day when we had typewriters. Oh my gosh. So either way, it's the long one, okay? And so the long one is going to be used for hooking together things, different parts in sentences. The short one's going to be used for hooking together words. Just think of it that way, okay? So the short one hooks together words. The long one is going to hook together um, sentences. So here's what we do with the long one, the dash. It's a level up from the comma for extra information. You want to put in extra information. You want it to be a little more dramatic. You want it to point toward, you know, um, the information. Here we go. Here's a, a sentence about little buddy again. Our new dog, ooh, who showed up at our door thirsty and hungry. Extra information. But notice how just visually this stands out more, right? Because you just have more space there. So that is going to point it out more. So it's like the super comma. You know, it's like the comma on steroids. You really want somebody to notice some detail you've got? Boom, use those. Our dog who showed up at our door thirsty and hungry. Oh, I want you to feel sadness. It's quite the little scallywag. Oh, little troublemaker, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you have a list of extra information, so... We saw that semicolon rule we already forgot, okay? Here's a way if you got a list in the middle of your sentence and you need to set it off as extra information, the groceries that spilled in the car, orange juice, milk, and yogurt, didn't smell so good the next day. Even when you clean these up very carefully in the middle of the summer, your car will smell like it's been fermented. I'm just telling you from experience, man. <laughs> Scrub the shit out of that. Go out there. It's 105, man. Fermented orange juice and yogurt. Oh, mm, fun, right? So I want to tell you like what I those groceries are. So I want that extra list. Well, if I put commas here and I've got commas there, commas there, and a comma here, again, we'll go back to being comatose and nobody's going to laugh at that a second time. Mm, so it just works as extra information. Um, we can use it like a colon. I have three classes today. Oh, notice we have that full sentence, right? Boom. I want to like point them out to you more dramatically. English, geology, and math. Boom. There we go. So it is, in this case, you're really using it just to kind of mm, be a little more dramatic. I have a question mm -hmm. that I've been wondering. Uh, when you, let's just start a letter, right? Like, uh, good morning, miss. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever yeah. it says. What do you use? It Does depends. It if it's a business letter, you're going to use the colon, the two dots. Mm -hmm. Professor Wood, colon. I'm writing to tell you about what I'm doing here. Why I ended up in your class. Right? Whatever it is. If it's an informal letter, you could just do like Dear Kelly, comma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You know, that's old school. That's back when we used to actually write letters. Back in the day. Yeah. So... You're writing an email to a friend, and you want to say, Dear Afris, I want to write an email to my friend Afris. Dear Afris, how are things going? <laughs> Those bunnies are so cute. I don't know how you're ever going to be able to cook them. Uh, she sent me pictures of baby bunnies, and I'm like, oh, they're cute. And she's like, yeah, we can't name them. <laughs> that means they're going to be dinner. <laughs> they will be cooked. <laughs> Um, yeah, so there it is. Again, it goes back to what's your purpose, right? Why would we want to do a, this instead of a colon? Well, we're really pointing it out. Like maybe we're talking about like you've got work and you've got classes and you've got all of that, right? Boom, this, this, and that. And then I go to work and do this, this, and that. So it's going to be about that. It's about that audience. Who are you writing to? What effect do you want to get across? This is the break the rules like an artist or make the choices like an artist. We're not breaking rules. We're just making choices. If you want to put the list first, always use the dash. Sun, sand, and relaxation. Those are the reasons they went on vacation. English, geology, and math. Those are the classes I have today. 
Okay. Um, so, you know, I mean, you could put a comma at the end of relaxation or that, but this is just more lyrical. And this, of course, is a writing style that's a little more poetic. So that's why we would choose the dash there. So that's that's the dash. Really, you use it like a, it's calm on steroids. You want to point something out more, or if you have a list in the middle of your sentence, then use that dash because that helps separate it out. And you don't have so many commas. It really does get confusing to read. Okay. The hyphen just does words. And I got a nice little test to show you to figure out whether you need it or not. Usually Grammarly, usually WordPerfect's grammar check will catch this. I think the hyphen will start being used more because they both suggest it more than I would use it naturally. So... You know, I mean, I think that's where technology also changes our language. The printing press changed the language. Cuneiform changed the language. All of these kinds of things change our language. The internet changed our language. Um, so the crusty face pirate gave us a dirty look, right? And he's just like, oh, uh, right? Crusty face, dirty, you know, bunch of stubble, all that kind of stuff. So we're using the hyphen to put two words together to mean something different than they do on their own. Yeah. I thought the hyphen was the double dash. Oh, it is. You're right. You're right. The hyphen. No, no, no. The dash is the, the dash is the, it's the M dash because it's an M. It's bigger. And then the, the, the hyphen is the N dash. Okay. The dash is the long one. And the hyphen's the short one, even though the words are the opposite, because English is that way too. Was I saying it backwards? That or I heard it backwards in the beginning of the We'll say it's both of us, okay? So <laughs> just remember the long one is the comma on steroids, okay? That's all you gotta remember, right? You need two of them, okay? And that is a dash. I I don't doubt I might have been saying it wrong. I think it was two hyphens make one dash. Two hyphens make one dash, exactly. So, And then we want the hyphen. So here's how we check this. If we can break these words apart and make two separate sentences that make sense, one with just crusty and one with just paste, then we're not doing anything new, right? If they have to go together to make sense, then we want to show, hey, we're hooking these two word ideas together. So, the crusty pirate gave us a dirty look. Well, we can say somebody's kind of crusty. You know, they're gripey, they're, you know, crotchety, all that stuff. But the faced pirate, it's kind of like, what? That doesn't make sense, right? So, we're saying crusty faced. We got to have them together. If you like a super soft mattress, how many of you do not like a really soft mattress to sleep on? Yeah, right. Like a super soft mattress to me is not super. I think that body would be like fur. <laughs> exactly, right? But some people, so it's not a super mattress. It's not a soft mattress. There's a difference between just soft and like super soft. Anybody ever slept on one of those super soft? They just like, just, ugh. yeah, <laughs> like no support at all, right? I'm like, the ground is better, really. Like the water bits. If they're not filled all the way, definitely, right? They can do that, right? So, or extra firm. It's not just an extra mattress. No, it's not like another one you have. It's not just a firm one. It's extra firm, really firm, right? So in that case, we need those together. Numbers are, oh, this is one place where you could do it, but it would probably just be better to use the quote marks. Like you could do the, I'm not sure what you want from me look. She gave us, told us she wasn't interested in joking. That's just something that English majors do because they're like, ah, 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 okay. Really, I would just, anymore, I would just put the quote marks, the I'm not sure what you want from me look. I'm giving you a definition of that look she gave us. Right. Um, so you can do that, but be careful. But here, they wanted two-thirds of the cake. They didn't want two of the cake. They didn't want thirds of the cake. They wanted two of them, right? Um, we paid $23 for it. We didn't just pay $20. We didn't pay three. We paid 23 Now, that is highly formal. 
If you type it up and Word or Grammarly are not telling you to put that hyphen in 23 or in the fraction, or if you don't feel like anybody's going to be confused by it, it's fine. Because I really believe we will end up, our language will shift to go with what. I'm, this is a case where you can see a company defining language because the biggest part of enterprise of Microsoft is enterprise, which is in businesses like schools, <laughs> other businesses. So that's where a whole lot of it is. So a lot of people are spell checking documents that way, using them that way. We get used to it. We learn from that. It's conditioning, psychological conditioning. And so it changes the way we use language. So, skibbity, we do too. Okay. I'm gonna look up what it means one of these days, but I'm just waiting for. No, I'm waiting like, to hear it in its natural habitat. It's I'm like, like cringy. yeah. According to my little cousins. Oh, okay. There we go. I'm just waiting for one of them to grow up enough to be in college and me to hear it like used naturally. Yeah, but if it doesn't last, do you think it's? Language. Do you think it's gonna last? No. I mean, like, we don't say groovy anymore, but that one stayed, right, for a long time. It will. It's it's going to work its way out probably after Gen X, my generation's gone. And, you know, there'll be no, you know, people will be, like, looking at a dictionary. Oh, that's kind of funny. An old movie or something. But All right, cool. So there we go. You want super commas on steroids? Use the dash. You just need to hook together words for to make them the two words mean something different. Use that hyphen. Okay. Um, parentheses. They are supplemental information. The sentence should be grammatically correct without it. And generally, you really want to save this for technical reasons in your college writing. Okay. Um, I like to say. What goes in parentheses is related, but not relevant. My alma mater, NS, NMSU, go Aggies, is a great school. Well, NMSU, their mascot's the Aggies. So that's related, but it's really not relevant to my saying, look, it's a great school. I went to one baseball game, and I have an associates from Doniana right across the street, and my bachelor's and my master's from NMSU. So... You know, go Aggies, whatever, right? Texas is the home of a lot of football teams, Dallas Cowboys. I don't know. It's not a lot. I guess that's it. You know, well, you're professional, right? Um, so this is related, but not relevant. Um, and they are pretty much extra information. It's just, it's just really not as connected. You're putting it in there. You're letting people know, here's this stuff, but really, it's kind of like extra, extra, extra information. Eh, ask yourself why you're doing it, right? We wouldn't use a chainsaw to cut butter. Why would we want to put those parentheses in our paper? If you have a reason, do it. If you want to say go Aggies for the hell of it, do it. But if not, it's like using a chainsaw to cut butter. No. Grandma's not going to like that at her table. Mm. Okay. All right. So um, this is needs to go. And ignore that one. Okay. So, yeah, that was really old school. So I think anymore, I don't think anybody's doing that rule. And this is the thing you need to know. Language changes. Internet. What did this word mean? before the 1970s, and then really it was the 1990s when like common people started using the word, right? It meant nothing. So yeah, um, language changes. Albert Einstein said, try not to become a person of success, but rather try to become a person of value. I changed his quote there. That's not exactly what he said. When I put those quote marks, I'm saying this is exactly what somebody said. If I change something, one, I should never do it so it makes it mean something different. That is unethical. That is wrong. Don't use your powers for evil, okay? But if I change it to fit the grammar in, to say, look, Einstein actually said, try not to become a man of success, but rather become a man of value. 
Okay, that's great. I get it. I was raised on the King James when man was just like man, woman, whatever's people, right? But here, I might want to put a person in so that, you know, the other 50% of us could feel just maybe a little bit more obviously included. Sometimes I might read something and know there's actually a typo in it. There's actually a mistake. This is from Theodore Dreiser's book, An American Tragedy. They were harmoniously abandoning themselves to the rhythm of the music like two small chips being tossed about on a rough but friendly sea. I have two choices. I can put this, sick, which is some abbreviation for Latin, I didn't make that mistake, okay, where I'm telling my teacher, no, I know this is the wrong word, but look, I didn't make that mistake. So again, those brackets show I changed something. I'm showing my reader, here's my quote, but inside of it, the square parentheses, I changed something, okay? <laughs> I would want to use that if maybe I was some dorky English major writing a paper about different typos that were done in different books. So I want to leave the typo there and show people, right? But really, if I just want you to get the idea of this, I would put in the correct word. They were harmoniously abandoning themselves to the rhythm of the music, like two small ships being tossed about on a rough but friendly sea. Right? And since that's the way it was written there, I'm going to go ahead and change it so I show people I changed it, but I'm not changing the meaning. right? And of course, I'd look it up somewhere else and say, did he really mean chips or did he mean ships? So... Um, so if there's a mistake, if it's like British English, American English, and it's like a, a writer who's writing in British English and has color, C-O-U-L-O-R, whatever, theater with the E at the end of it, however those British people spell that stuff, you'll look at it, you'll be like, that's wrong. And Grammarly and spell check will tell you that's wrong. And you're like, wait, you don't have to put sick there or anything like that. You don't have to fix it. It's just a British writer. They don't speak real American. It's like my brother-in-law who's from Bolivia told me I don't speak Spanish. I speak Mexican. I'm like, yeah, and, and I speak border Mexican too, right? There's a difference between that and southern Mexican. So, All right. So what we have is we know that if we're going to use the parentheses, it's related but not relevant to what we're talking to. It's like extra, extra, totally extra, super extra, epic extra, right? If we got a quote and we need to change a word, we need to fit the grammar in. We'll look at that when we get to essay two and three. We use those brackets to show people, hey, I changed something, or to show teacher, look, I didn't make that mistake. The writer did. Not me. Don't put your red X on my paper. Yeah. All right. Um, and then you can use brackets or parentheses. And you notice, if you remember, if you can recall back to Papi Puero, he used the dash for some of the translations from English to Spanish. The, um, when, uh, cuando yo estaba chico, when I was little, there's a dash there, okay? Um, so, but you could use um, parentheses or, or um, como se dice, um, um, brackets, either one, just be consistent. You know, don't use like one, one time in a paper and then different one, okay? So some of my first words in Spanish were, and if you could see this correctly, this is in italics, tortillas con mantequilla, tortillas with butter. Mmm, hot tortillas with some butter on them. Mmm, so good. Man, I'm hungry. All right, one last thing, one last thing. Ellipsis mark. So the ellipsis mark is the three periods in a row, right? The dot, dot, dot. Here it is, dot, dot, dot. That is one piece of punctuation. So you want to make sure, technically, you're supposed to have spaces between each of them. It would be something, space, period, space, period, space, period, space. But if it does that on your computer, you, don't, you want them to stay together at the end of the row. Go ahead and scooch them together. Okay, if like they start at the first, go ahead and put another space between that word. Just make sure they're all together. Okay, it'd be like separating the exclamation point where you have the line and then the dot at the bottom. You can't put the line here and the dot over here. Right? It's one 
So those three dots, dot, 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 they all go together. Okay. All right, so here's the general rule of thumb, because I got all sorts of different rules here, and APA does it one way, MLA does it more. What I am seeing, noticing being more commonly used in everything is that don't use it at the end or the beginning of a quotation. So if you just take part of a sentence out and put it there, it should be obvious, you know, unless that would cause some conclusion, confusion in the meaning. Then you need to clarify that with either your words or add more of the quote. But if you're giving a quote, then, and you want to leave some words out, then you're going to use the dots. And because this is a quote, I'm also going to put these ellipses in brackets, right? Because I got a quote. I added it in. It goes in there. Here's the original quote. What strength belongs to every plant and animal in nature? The tree or the brook has no duplicity, no pretentiousness, no show. It is with all its might and main what it is and makes one in the same oppression and effect on on effect at all times. So that's Ralph Waldo Emerson talking about plants and animals and nature and they are what they are, right? And so I like that idea, but I'm like, dude, you're a little wordy. I want to get rid of some of this and just give your main idea. What strength belongs to every plant and animal in nature? I left some out. Actually, I left more than a sentence out. So I've got the ellipses and then I'm showing. I left some out and there's the end of the sentence. <laughs> it is, right here, it is with all its might and main, um, blah, 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 right? I just, I'm like, look, I want to get to the point. It is what it is and makes one in the same impression and effect at all times. So there are times we'll use quotes in our writing, especially in our academic writing, and we might not need all of it because it may be related but not relevant, Right? Or maybe we don't need all the details, like Emerson there. He's going all philosophical and old school because he's old school, you know, back in the olden, olden days. Okay. Um, so maybe he was the one that said something very important in 1897. You know, I think he lived about that time. Maybe he lived earlier. I don't know. Yeah, so. so if you give the, the um, if you leave things out, Boom, put them in there like that in your quote, okay? If you're writing dramatically, you know, people on the outside think there's something magical about writing. Here, this is Harlan Ellison using this kind of like a dash in a way. Um, but it isn't like that. You sit back in the back of, in back of the typewriter and you work, and that's all there is to it. At the end of the day, writing is sometimes hard work. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Slash, you don't really need to know. Um, either or, don't write it. If you use, don't say, um, like in, in essays, don't write his slash her, write his or her. Write it out, okay? The only time you don't is if you mean that thing. This was an either or situation. Like an either or situation means, you know, got to make a choice, right? Um, next time we'll have snacks, you could bring cookies or coffee. Cookies and or coffee. That means you could bring cookies, you could bring coffee, or you could bring both, right? And or is like everything, right? So there, because we wouldn't write and slash or. We just, it's and or. Either or situation. Either this or that. Boom. That's it. So that case we would, but otherwise slash write it out. Commas, three things, boom, 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 series. Put those commas between them, right? You got a sentence here, you got a sentence here. Put that comma, give it a helping word because they're big sentences. We got extra information. We could put it out there with commas, but if we really want to make it dramatic, we can use those hyphens, right? Wait, dashes. <laughs> now I'm totally going to overthink it. We use those big ones, right? <laughs> Point it out, okay? We got a full sentence and we want to give a list or a quote or something like that. Boom, full sentence, colon. Ah, and there we go, just like that. What else we need? Oh, we want to hook up some words, make them mean something different together than they do on their own. 
Then we use the little one. That's when we use the hyphen. Cool. We want to leave a few words out of a quote. Boom, boom, boom. Put that ellipses in there. Ooh, because it's a quote. We're going to put it in brackets, too. Show people. I did that. Okay. And what else? What else? You've got to test me here. Mm. Oh, semicolons. We can put sentences together. Boom, boom. One, two, punch. Right? Just like that. <sighs> Break time? Go put on my other earrings so I can be appro appropriately dressed for not doing punctuation. <laughs> Does it make sense in plain English? Mm -hmm. Did you know most of those? Or had anybody ever told you, yeah, do you have the rules? Do y'all have the rules? It's unusual. A lot of people don't get told the rules. They're like, yeah. Uh, most people are like, no, they just told me put a comma where you pause. <laughs> Which the reason we pause is either it's really long and we need a breath or put a comma there. So. Oh, let's, um, I'm trying to get you to see how my wrapping paper is not worth anything valuable, but what it represents is valuable only to me. I also try to get you to experience the day with me and have you feel how special it was for me. I hope to get my point across clearly and not lose anybody while they read it. So your essay is the essay, but this is you writing about your essay. You're preparing me. You get to tell me, hey, Kelly, before you grade this, Here's my main point. The second part you're going to tell me in that um, cover letter is explain, tell me something you feel good about. What's something you like in your writing? I've been doing this long enough. I have never read a piece of writing if there wasn't something I liked in it. It may be a sentence. It may be the way you used words. It may be the story you told. It may be the memories that it brought back for you. Right? What is it you like? Here, I said, now this is me, English teacher e. Kelly. I cannot not be who I am. I have tried to not be Kelly, to be somebody different. It never worked for me. Didn't work in high school, doesn't work as an adult. I got English teacher e. talk, because that's the way I am, right? Overall, I'm pleased with the narrative. I could have just said the story. That's just as good, but no, I'm an English teacher, right? In the essay there, I feel like I've been able to create a good feel for moments I tell about. I think you'll see a strong use of description that develops feelings for stall movements and moments. One of my favorite moments is use at least one example. When you're writing a letter and you're going to say, I want you to send me my money back because this product sucks, you need to make sure you back it up with examples, right? You want to say, give me money because I'm just right for your scholarship. Back it up with more than just I'm great. Give some examples, right? So here, at first touch, the woven texture of the cloth covering revealed the bag's contents. Before I pulled the book out, I seemed to smell the dustiness that comes with sitting on a shelf for so long. So why do I think that's good? I think this description works as it uses tactile, going back to being an English teacher, the things I touch, right? And aromatic description here. What does the book smell like, right? To give more than just visual description. Jessica, on the other hand, says, I feel good about my descriptive words and scenes as I remember them. I think I did a good job on my writing. I'm especially proud of how I described getting the photo album down. Oh, look, end of the sentence, and now she's going to give us a quote. She's got that colon. Oh, man. The smell of the new rubber tires draws my attention as I go to the back corner of the top shelf in the closet. Neatly stacked is a black packed plastic binder. I reach up and pull it toward me, and when I do, I feel all the dust that is collected on my fingertips. Why does she like it? I like that I use both visual and tactile senses. Ah, is that not something most of us could, most people can say in writing this essay? Yeah, right. So you can use that if that's what you like. Use it. It's okay, right? I also like that I was able to write about a part of my life when I really had a good time. I value my family very much, and I think it comes through in the essay. So that's where you say, hey, Kelly, you're going to grade my paper, whatever grading entails. Don't forget to look at the good stuff. There it is. And then the next part 
I want you to ask me for help. Now, she doesn't have the ask in here as clear. And actually, over the last year, that's become clearer and clearer to me that that is an important part of business writing. So my friend Terry Mann, who used to be an English teacher, is now one of the deans here. And <laughs> about a year ago, we were we were having tea. I mean, we've been we we both got hired at the same time. So you know, we've been friends for like twenty years in our offices. We're right across from each other. Um, and so she said, if there's one thing I would like you to teach your students, since I know you do teach, you teach letters in in English 1301, teach them to be clear with their requests. She said, I had an employee come in like three times in the last week, and she kept asking me, so how many people are going to be at this thing? And she'd be like, well, you know, we'll have about this or that or whatever. She said, finally, in the end, I realized what she was really asking me was, how many copies of this handout do I need to make? But she didn't want to ask for that, right? She was just kind of trying. But it's much easier if you just ask. Right. So what do you want me? Yes, I'm going to help you with commas. OK, so a lot of these have, you know, are letters from before I started saying, look, when you ask somebody at work, ask them. It's their job to help you out. Do whatever you're asking them to do. If not, they'll be like, well, I can't help you with that. But so and so can. Right. So, you know, it's it's kind of hard because sometimes you're like, wait, I'm asking the boss for this. And that was the thing was Terry realized this person wasn't because she had just started not long ago as the dean. So they weren't quite sure, you know, you, you don't know what your new boss is going to be like. The one we had before was definitely a micromanager. And she was just like she could never make a decision. But then she didn't like you to come in and be too much like, here's how we're going to do it. So she was just a bad boss. OK, so anyway, so you want to do the ask. So. Ask me what you want feedback on, and it may be a specific part of your paper. And I think I updated this. Um, well, like here she says, I feel I might have written a little too much in some parts, but maybe not enough in others. And she tells me specifically, right, not just like vague. But while I feel my discussion of what this means to me is clear, I'm not sure if I talked about how important my family is to me. And I'm concerned that not all of my readers will be able to connect with my essay. I included some narrative, but I also still a little unsure about that. I'd appreciate if you could give me some specific feedback on those things. So what are you worried about with yours? Yeah, the language. Yeah, the grammar. That's what we're here for. That's why we have English class. But just in terms of your writing, did this make sense? You might say, I tried this thing, or I've never done this thing writing a story before. I think I got it, but I really want to know what you think about it. You may have tried something different and say, hey, you know, I did this. I think it works. But tell me, does it, you know, let me know. Or if not, how could I improve it? Or what could I do instead? Okay, so for your letter, your cover letters, you always write those after you're done with whatever they go with. So like this, this one goes with the essay. So you write the essay first, and then you stop and now start thinking about your writing. Just remember your letter is about your writing. It is not the essay itself, right? You write the essay, that's one thing. This is a letter to Kelly about the writing, okay? Um, and then she says, got that last sentence in, you know, we always want that last paragraph, one or two sentences. I look forward to your feedback and hope I'm in the right path. That is perfectly fine. I had fun doing this, um, or I've never done anything like this before. I'm not sure, so I want to know what you think. Make sure you sign it. Put your, signet, your signature on there, whether you do a font or, did you have your signature? Amanda, you had your actual signature, the, the file in there. Yeah, cool, excellent. You did it, but you're going to make sure and do that, okay? Anessa, or was it Dre, um, Dante? Maybe it's Dante. Dante had his, I think, so. Yeah, make sure, well, you can do font, like this is just font, right? So you could do like a script font. But one of the things as you go through college, you want to figure out how to get that signature in your thing. But I'm fine either way. As long as you're showing me, you'd sign it. You can even do this, which I have in the assignment. You can even do this right here and put, I'd sign here, right there. 
as long as I know your signature is your affirmation that that is from you. When I get an email from you, if it's from my left foot at yahoo.com, maybe it's you, maybe it's not. If it's from your college email, it's going to have your username. It's more of an assurance it's from you. Your friends know your email is my left foot at yahoo.com or whatever, right? They're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's you, right? <laughs> you get an email from the FedEx manager. You're like, no, that's scam. Yeah. Okay. So you can either do that or you can put literally the in brackets there at sign here. I just want you to remember it because if you do an actual letter, and once you get to kind of more brass tacks, more professional things, you're going to want that signature in there. Okay. So and by then, I, there's a there's a link on the schedule here. Is it on the schedule? Um. Oh. I didn't. I'll pop it on there. I'll put it on the schedule. Okay, I'll put it in down here. That is to a um, little YouTube video that it's like she does like six minutes where she explains if you want to have your signature file where you can put it in there, how to get one. Okay, I have a workshop idea, but that's like 50 minutes. You listen to me enough. So, okay, so makes sense. Your cover letter is you thinking about your essay. I read it first, and that way, before I even read, I get to hear what you have to say. Here's the good stuff. Here's stuff I want your advice on. Maybe stuff you're worried about. Maybe stuff you feel good about, but you're like, hmm, I'm not sure. Let me know. Cool beans. Putting your essay together from um, the um, pre-writings. Once you have pre-writing one, two, and three, you have done this. You've explored the details in pre-writing one. You've developed your narrative or your support, and you've examined why it's important. Remember, in the last pre-writing, um, the slideshow for it, I said there were three things in each essay. You've got to have your main point, your evidence, and your so what. And that's what pre-writing three was. So what? Why does this matter? Why is it important? Right? What was Papi Fuero? He was security. He was that comfort. He was that just knowledge of, of safety and sturdiness in Ruben's life. Right, all of these different things with with Jessica. Right, this moment, this sixteenth birthday or eighteenth birthday, I forget which one it was. Right, but she has this piece of wrapping paper that's like a card, and there it is. Right, it wasn't a fancy gift. It wasn't even a fancy like bought card. It was this moment showing this connection with her family. Right, how important that was. How important they all went out of their way. They surprised her with a surprise birthday party. They'd given her that themselves. So that's important. So that's what you have. You have the basic ingredients. If you've done the pre-writings, one, two, three, now you just got to put them together. And so you just decide how does that, how are you going to do that? And that's where you can think about some of these different ones we've looked at. We haven't read The Sound of Our Rose, Rose of My Rose or Threads of Sunshine, but you can take a look at them. They are, if you basically just take pre-writing two, your story, and then pre-writing three and put those together and then smooth it out, right? Decide what you want to keep. What do you need to expand on? Put some more details in. Is there anything you're like, get rid of this, right? Whatever. You turn that into an essay, right? Put more details in there. Make it flow together. That's a good structure where you tell a story and then you say, here's why it matters. It's a wonderful structure. Another structure, though, and what we saw in um, Just Like My Papi Huero, and there's another one I've given you examples, and each of these, when you go to the 1301 emblematic object page, you go down here, all of these are samples. So here's connecting with history. This is Josue's, so that's there. You know, there's Just Like Papi Huero. There's all of these. You can take a look at them. You want to read them. You want to get ideas. Where is that? It's on the um, English 1301 page under emblematic essays. So 1301, emblematic object. Yeah. Or, yeah, emblematic object, either there. So all of the, remember for all of the essays we do, the main essay page will have the assignment, all of the, the pre-writing, the slideshows, there's a PDF and there's the video and then other readings and then samples. So you can always go when you get stuck, 
Maybe you're stuck on the introduction or the conclusion or just some of the storytelling. Open up two, three, four examples and just read a paragraph or two of those parts. If you were working on the introduction, just read the first paragraph of two, three, four of them and say, okay, let me do mine, kind of what inspires me. How do I want to do that, right? Same thing. You want to wrap it up? How does that last paragraph work? Read two, three, four of them and say, okay, cool. I read those. Now let me kind of do that with that in mind. So those are options that gives you more options. One of the ones that um, seasoning a bond, um, Debbie creates a connection between the past and the present. So she goes home from work and she was just going to put like a pizza in the oven. And she's like, no, I'm going to cook. And so she gets down this iron skillet and she starts just cooking some hamburger. And so she's like stirring it and everything. And then in her mind, oh, back in time. Right. And so she's thinking of when she was little and she'd help her mom in the kitchen and then something happens. Right. The doorbell rings and there's like a package or something. And so she's boom. And then she goes back and she picks up, you know, she's kind of stirring things. And then boom, she goes back in time again. Right. So she's going back between, you know, oh, I found myself in my kitchen and I'm doing the same thing and her kind of her story and her significance. And she's really just interweaving them all. So you have a lot of options in terms of order you put them together. That's up to you. Look at the samples for that, right? Decide, you know, if you, there's one that we've read that you're like, yeah, I really like that. I That makes sense to me, right? So first, those pre-writings help you just get down your ideas. You can shape them. You don't need to include everything in your pre-writings. If you're like, mm, that doesn't fit, or I can say it better now, when you handwrite them, you do have an advantage because often, or if you'll handwrite your draft, I often just type it up first because I'm like, oh, let me just do it on the computer, right? But when you handwrite, what happens, even if you handwrite just a little bit, you'll start typing it up and you'll find you get more ideas coming to you. And I've said that and I've had student after student after student tell me, yeah, that did work for me. That actually happened. So when I'm stuck with stuff, I try to go back and say, you know what, let me just write a little bit, at least two or three paragraphs. And then usually it kind of lets me get going. If you really can't get started and you're stuck, first of all, remember, you don't need to start with the, the introduction. Okay. None of these have that classic. None of these say in this essay, do they? Don't say that in your essay. Okay. No, no in this essay. <laughs> no in conclusion. I get it. Um, if you've done your job, it's going to feel like it's wrapping up and I'll know. Okay. So none of that. Those are training wheels. If you had teachers who told you to do that for, I'm not saying they were wrong. I'm just saying it was training wheels. Now we're big kid school. So yeah, none of that. So no in conclusion, no in this essay. What we look at over and over when we see this a lot of times, most people start with some of the story because it's just kind of interesting. I'm at home cooking dinner when I hear my oldest son, Ernesto, walk through the front door. I say, how was your day? Good. I have a project for school and need some baby pictures to go with it, replies Ernesto. Okay, babe, I'll get the photo out, um, the album of photos after you eat dinner, I tell him. Mom, I need them now because you will forget later. Okay, I'll get them. I turn off the stove and walk to the hallway cl closet. The smell of the new tire. And so we get that, right? And then we get the piece of brown wrapping paper. Might be insignificant. I notice a tear halfway down. You know, Jessica does a lot of really nice things in this essay. She describes that note. Um, and then she goes back in time to when it was her birthday. And she's like, nobody has remembered my birthday Right. And so she's like, oh, man. And then, um, you know, when she they go over to her aunt's house and everybody's there. It's a party. Yay. And then she did this. This is where um, where she gives the, um, you know, the, the what's in the card. Right. The handmade card where it has this. So I took liberty with spacing here. This is a, a break the rules like an artist. OK. Typically, we wouldn't really scoot this over. Well, we could, um, but the thing is, is she wanted to have the, the note in the original Spanish 
and then give the English. So she wanted both. I said, do you want to just do that? She's like, no, I really want both in there because I kind of want people, even if they don't speak Spanish, to just kind of see it the way I saw it, right? And so it's also, it's in italics, that kind of thing. That is Spanish, but it just makes it kind of stand out more. Now, would I say you could put it in like a script handwriting? That would be dicey in a college paper, even though I would get it. So I would always ask my teacher about that. I was like, no, let's not. Because in the end, camp college writing is about legibility and that. So you want to stay kind of as much as you can with those things. So she has the Spanish, and then she says in English it reads, and she gives the translation there. So, you know, you have liberty in this essay to do some of those artistic things. That's my that's my little <clears throat> spiel about putting this essay together. Okay? So that's your job between now and and what is this? This is Wednesday, Monday, right? And we've got till 8:30 and I'll hang out and look at what you got and talk to you about what you want to talk about. The other kind of final things with that are once you have a draft, then that's when you do. Then you've got your head and your heart on the paper, right? Then you start thinking about the grammar stuff. Then you run it through Grammarly. Then we'll come in next time. Make sure you have a draft that you can share. And we can print here, too, if we want to print out. Um, you know, but if you have it digitally, we can share that way, too. You know, on the computer, that's fine. Either way, whatever works for you. Um, but that way you have that reader. Because it's only by having somebody read it that they can say, you can say, wait, I wasn't sure. Did that make sense? I mean, really, the way I've fixed a whole lot of my writing is students have said, huh? Just like y'all did last time with the with the bullets, right? You're like, wait, Blackboard, where does this get turned in? Yeah, because sometimes we don't think about it. We get stuck in our head, and we got to have somebody read. And when it's big stakes writing, I have a copy of my cover letter for this job that has comments from both my friend Marsha and my friend Amy, because I may have graduated with degrees in English, but I really wanted this job. And so it wasn't, I wasn't just, I wasn't going to be ashamed to show somebody to make sure I was good with that. Okay, let me see what else is on my list and then I'll shut up and just come around and help you out. How about that? At the very end of the assignment, I know what else is on there. If you want to see how I'm grading this, this isn't just, oh, I hope Kelly likes it, okay? Um, at the very end of the assignment is the list of each assignment is the grading rubric. So what am I looking at? The, the rubric actually, it's a chart, but it looks, it's got all of these things on it. So your format and design turned in, uploaded, that kind of thing. Correct MLA format. So with your letter, it's going to be, this is at the end of the letter thing too. So you can look at that. It's going to be that business professional, it's a professional font, right? Um, required minimum link. So we're working for three pages. If you don't get all the way there, is that okay? My job's to help you out. That's another reason we have somebody read it because they can say, hey, you know what would help? Maybe if you told me more about this or why not talk about that? So, you know, somebody else can do that. I can do that. We help each other out that way. Okay. Um, does it communicate that dominant impression? So that overall feeling, <clears throat> emotion, images. Um, you got to identify the, con the object. Do not... Like not tell what it is and then at the end of the essay and say, oh, and it was my cool cup holder. Okay, no, 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 that, that's, that's fifth grade stuff. We're done with that, okay? Um, so make sure and identify. Now I say early on, sometimes it doesn't. Some of these samples you see, it doesn't happen till the middle. It should just be natural. Just don't play the game of, oh, yeah, and then it was this, right? Yeah, don't do that, okay? Does it have description? Does it have narrative? Do you have that interpretation? Those are the main ingredients. All the development is, are you organizing that? Are you, you know, giving details on that? Are you digging deeper with the meaning more than just my grandpa was important to me? How? Right. And if you are talking about somebody else and you need to make it longer, I know when the loud teacher gets quiet, people listen. 
So this is important. If you're talking about somebody else in your life, this thing represents somebody else, and you're like, how do I make this? Make sure you tell about who that person is. What are they like? My dad was the kind of man who, right? He taught me, right? Why are you writing about this thing that reminds you of that other person if you never talk about that other person other than saying, yeah, it was my Poppy Weddle, right? No, we know Poppy Weddle was a strong guy. We know he might have been old, but man, he kind of had that little glint in his eye, right? Maybe a little bit of mischievousness, whatever is going on there, right? We learn a lot of things about him. So think about that when if you come up short, ask yourself, oh, okay, if this is about some other person, have I, you can just describe that person too. And that is the kind of person who right, would make you laugh the moment you saw her because she smiled all the time, right? Or, you know, was really serious and everybody was kind of, my friends were kind of afraid of him, but he was actually a very gentle, loving person, whatever it is. So don't forget that because that's a comment I write a lot on student papers. I'm like, this is great, but you never really, you say this person's important to you, but you never really tell who they are, right? So don't forget that. That's a good thing. And the same thing if it's just some time in your life, you know, more than just, and that was in the the grand old piano where I forget who talks about, you know, how this piano became this thing through different times, his teenage years when, you know, he's angsty and angry and emotional and all that, these different times in his life, like how it was this kind of place where he could get his emotions out and have some comfort and have connection. Okay. Okay. All right. There we go. Style, voice, tone, sentence, reflect the type of writing expected. This is very much you. So yes, you're working on your grammar. You're working on, you know, those kinds of things, but it should also really be you. None of these have big words. You can look at a defining of character and it's a little more formal feeling. Um, oh gosh, I just went blank. What was his name? I can see his face and I can imagine his truck. It's a man in his truck essay. Okay, Susie Q, man. Um, Sheridan, Sheridan. He was more formal. Like he just talked more that way. He's one of those people, you've known him. Some people are just a little more formal, right? He was that kind. So if that's you, that's you. But if it's not, you know. You know right? And then grammar, yeah, we're, we're looking to work on that. Cool beans. With all of our dances. So That's the second half of the class. There we go. I did it. What questions do you want to ask me about that? Next time your job is just to, you know, here's one more um you know, essay sample and a, a sample letter to read. And those are just all about saying, look, look at another sample. It'll give you ideas, right? You can say, hey, I like that. I could do that my way. Right? Um, and then getting feedback and for peer review, just so that you think about, okay, one, the value of it, and two, how to give somebody else some feedback that's helpful. Because it's nice if everybody says, yeah, this is great, but does it really help us make it better? So for Monday, we just need the cover letter, right? Cover letter and your draft of your essay. Draft. Yeah. So which you should already have most of, because if you have done all three, or you may have already, if you've done all three pre-writings, you know, the first one is about just ideas and details, and it helps you write the second one. So it's really two and three that give you the words for your, they give you basic rough draft of your essay. Um, well, it was homework, but you can do it. Right? Yeah, exactly. I, I'm, I'm, y'all are showing up at 5 30 after a long day and listening to me for over an hour about punctuation. I love y'all, okay? So, yeah, if you don't have it done, do it now, <laughs> okay? But what you're coming in with on Monday is what's due. Oh, you know why that is? It's because, look, this is the one I told you I hate it when they separate over. It's because the next, this is one day, right? Yeah, exactly. So don't forget your due, your draft of your cover letter and your essay. So it's a rough draft. It's just like, hey, here's my best attempt. You come in with that 
and you share it, that's a 100. You're not sharing it on this big screen with everybody, right? Just, we'll just get together small groups, okay? You share it, that's a 100. But you got to come in with a rough draft and be willing to share it. That way I can do easy English teacher math. You come in with that rough draft and you share and you give somebody some feedback, get a 100. You come in and you're like, I don't have a rough draft, but I'll give somebody some feedback. You can have a 50. Mm, don't do either one of them. You get a zero. English teacher math made easy. Okay. So just remember the next week's is, I'll probably fix this where, I'll fix this online where it's all in one place. Okay. Because <laughs> I hate that when it splits. And I told the table not to split, but it did what it wanted to do without me. So. So that's what you're bringing in. And then next time will really be most of the time we'll spend doing the workshop. And then after that, you can work on fixing things and I can come around and help you out too. So ideally, you kind of leave here next time with, you know, you've had that, you have that rough draft you put together and you leave with it fixed up some based on other people giving you some feedback and me giving you some feedback too. Cool. Oh, I'm getting yeah. All you got to do is read what? <laughs> this is the ninth? Look, that's also that's the, the ninth. ninth. Yeah. yeah. Here, watch. I'll fix it right now. Because I, I get why you're confused. Well, I'm get, no, I'm getting confused because of the day oh. off. Oh, the day I off. Oh. I love days off, but they're they're rough. They make you, yeah. I'm thinking today's Monday instead of mm -hmm. Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, Jack and I always used to say that like, like Monday was Sunday on a Monday. Right, which mm -hmm. makes Tuesday Monday, but no, it's not really Monday because it's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and today feels like Tuesday, but it's Wednesday, and yeah. Mm -hmm. So the day's off. Okay, cool. I'm so then we're confused. We're confused in the same way. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, okay. Okay. I'm gonna. I'll pause this just in case we. Want